What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. This is a bit of a different video. So I have the Samsung Galaxy S10 here. Obviously this is a phone that's basically, I don't know the way you look at it, two or three years old at this point. And um, it's kind of different. It has some different things that some of the newer phones don't have. And then it has things that the new phones do have or don't have, I should say, or do have. Um, so there's things about this that are cool, things that is, are, are bad. And I've been using it for a little bit here and I kind of wanted to go over my thoughts and just kind of explain how much phones have actually improved in a lot of ways versus the past. Um, obviously this being an S10, this is one of the last phones that Samsung, if I remember correctly, at least the S10 and the, the uh, S, the, the, the plus version of this, they actually had the same screen resolution. They had 2K displays on here. I know the cool thing that this phone has is it has a headphone jack. They don't put headphone jacks in their phones anymore, at least their premium phones, they don't. It also has micro SD card expansion, so you can add uh, SD card inside of this phone for more expandable storage. This phone specifically has 128 gigs of storage. You can also get this in six gigs of RAM or eight gigs of RAM, and then all the way up to 512 gigs of internal storage uh, before you end, add that SD card. The other thing is that's kind of crazy is this has a dedicated button for Bixby or basically Bixby. I forgot about it. <laughs> I was like, this is actually, cause this is my, my mother-in-law's phone. Uh, she upgraded her phone. So I'm going to get rid of this phone for her. But ultimately this phone has that dedicated Bixby button. Remember that? which is really weird. And the volume buttons are on the left-hand side. I completely forgot, even though I did videos on this phone and other phones as well, having the buttons on the left-hand side feels very unfamiliar, especially on a Galaxy phone, which is really <laughs> annoying at the same time. Um, so yeah, if you love that, you have the assistant button, but that's gone now on the newer phones. And then you have the volume keys on the left-hand side, which I don't absolutely love. And then the power button feels really, really high up, even though this isn't that big of a phone. This is a 6.1 inch phone. The power button being all the way up on this side is very, very uncomfortable. And let's just run through the phone. Now, another thing that this phone has that the new phones don't have is this has a 60 hertz refresh rate and the new ones are at 120 hertz refresh rate. And also this is running Snapdragon 855, then ones are on 888s and 8 Gen 1s when the new ones come out. But ultimately one thing I know about this phone, I don't have a lot of apps on here, but just like using the phone, it feels slow and kind of sluggish and it's the one thing i don't miss about this phone at all is the sluggishness of it and i mean it's not super slow but it's enough to where i can totally notice the difference that you know the newer process and processors and the faster uh, refresh rates on the screens of the new phones really really make a difference you can just feel it it just the new phones feel a lot smoother than this one so that is one thing to, to keep in mind. Not that you're gonna come back and buy this phone. It's just funny to go back to phones like this and, and see something like, you know, that you take for granted nowadays. It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, it runs pretty good. There's a little bit of jagged edges on here. Nothing too crazy. We're going back in there, I wanna go back into that. Look at that huge, huge camera cutout for the cameras on the back there, on the front there, I should say. That camera is humongous. Absolutely, I don't know if I have, let me see if this phone shows it. Go back to my home screen. Obviously with the Galaxy phone, the, the Z Fold 3, it's, it's hidden, but it's crazy how big that is. It's, uh, it's almost an eyesore. <laughs> it's something definitely to get used to. It's uh, not very attractive when it comes down to it. Uh, this is the camera set up on the back. Not bad. I really, really love the design of this. I, I, if I remember correctly, isn't this like the Aura Glow color or something, whatever they called it. I, it's really cool though. I love all the, the, it changes colors in multiple angles of the phone. It's like a whitish, pinkish, bluish, grayish, whatever you want to call it. I like the camera design on the back. There's not much of a lip and you still get a 10X zoom when you go into the camera and you get a lot of the same modes. This, has, this is running currently Android 11, but you get single take, which allows you to get the best possible photo. You get photo mode, you get video mode. And like I said, video mode, you can zoom in up to 10X. I think you can on photos too, if I'm not mistaken. You go back in here and zoom in. Yep, 10X on photos too. And it's pretty, let's put my thumbnail there. It gets, gets pretty good. 
not too bad at all. Video, you can do up to 4K 60 on the front and the back, which is awesome. A lot of people don't need 8K, um, so this is nice to see that. That it, A couple years ago, this phone was still getting 4K uh, 60 uh, while using the app. You also have more modes and everything in here from AR Doodle, Pro Mode, Panorama, Pano, or food I should say, Night Mode, Portrait Mode, Portrait Video, Pro Video, all these different modes that you still get today. So like, you're not missing out on a lot with this phone, but you still get, you know, the headphone jack and the SD card and pretty good performance. Uh, so we just looked at the cameras there. So let's check out some photos and videos that I took with the cameras on the front and the back of this phone. Right, so this is the front camera shooting in 4k of the galaxy s10 that's right s10 new desk video i'm going to be doing a, a video on shortly pretty cool desk has monitors built right in anyways yeah this is what it looks like i'm going to walk around just a little bit so you get an idea uh, one thing i noticed about this phone you probably gonna, i'm probably going to say this even before i even show this video to you guys is it does feel a little bit slow a tinge slow i don't know if it's the 60 hertz refresh rate or what it is but Feels a tad slow. And then here is the back camera, the main camera, 4K 30 again. I'm gonna walk, do a little backwards walking. This phone is so cool looking actually. I really like the look of it. Um, like the design, the colors of the phone, it's very reflective. I think they called it Aura Glow or something like that. It's really, really nice. But this is what this looks like outside right now. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Here's a Geekbench 5 score, 724 on the single core, 2674 on the multi-core. Not very impressive, especially compared to um, benchmarks that come out today, which are above 1,000 and above 3,000. Uh, but, you know, it still competes for the most part uh, for what you'd want to probably do with this phone. Now, just a little update. They used to call these prism colors. Um, not the Aura colors. I think that was for the Note phone when they called them the Aura. Uh, these are the Prism colors. And then also charging was maxed out at 15 watt, fast charging on the back, uh, or actually on the, on the USB side here as well. Now, what about the screen? The screen for me seems, especially coming from a other you know Galaxy phones that I have, such as the S21 Ultra, this feels a little dim. Uh, definitely feels a little dim. It's not awful, it's definitely not like uh, some other phones that I've used in the past, but brightness is definitely not one of its stronger points, at least on the newer phones from what I can feel when I look at these phones. And that was only halfway brightness when I get this all the way up to, to full brightness. You know, it's definitely bright, don't get me wrong, but at the halfway point, whereas where I, where I usually like to keep it, not that impressive, honestly. Here's a little video. We got the speakers up. Let's put the speakers up all the way. The expect we're gonna see in terms of price, performance, features, and looks of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 versus what I wish we would see. With that said, let's jump into this video. First, let's talk about the looks of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. What do I think is gonna end up happening is probably Definitely looks good, sounds good as well. I'm actually surprised uh and the speakers aren't like, oh my god, amazing, but they definitely sound good quality. So this phone does not have 5G, it's limited to LTE, which at the end of the day, 5G is still growing, so it's not a huge, huge deal. Uh, 5G is getting in a lot of places, at least here in America, but you know that would be a, a nice reason, I guess, to upgrade it would be to get 5G. And then the fingerprint sensor, I'm not a huge fingerprint sensor fan of these under display fingerprint sensor, and this is one of the, I think this is the first one they used, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you can see it works pretty good. No, I'm not really having any issues. I just don't love these ones at the end of the day. So jumping up a couple of years, 2019 phone. This wasn't wasn't the best phone that they released, but it was in the same housing of you know being a, a great phone back then. It has the headphone jack, which is a big plus in a lot of people's book books. It has the micro SD card expansion storage on there. It's got a high resolution display. The resolution on the uh, refresh rate on there is only 60 hertz. The processor now is at Snapdragon 855 on here, which does seem a little bit old at this point. The design is really, really nice. I love the design 
of this phone, the back of it anyway, with the cameras as well. The button layout is something to be fixed and desired. I don't like how high this is on the, on the right hand side here, the power button. I don't like the volume keys and the extra button on the side here for Samsung on there. Uh, you're still getting the same software experience that you would basically on any of these phones this is running One UI 3. Uh, and you got Android 11 on here. And so a lot of the same themes and wallpapers and all that kind of settings and the display settings and everything else you've come to love about Samsung phones in here is pretty much on here. You got your advanced features as well. And I don't know there's a lot to like about this phone, but there's enough to not like about it, at least coming back from this like that as well, uh, that would keep me from ever wanting this type of phone again. Um, I really love the 120 Hertz uh, refresh rate on there. I love the better performance of the phones now. I don't need the, you know, the headphone jack or the micro SD card expansion for me myself. It doesn't really make that big a difference in my life. And I like bigger phones as well. This is like obviously one of the smaller phones, but still it's, it's held, held up pretty remarkably uh, over the last couple of years, I would have to say for sure. So there you guys go. Let me know your thoughts on the Galaxy S10. We'll see you down the road.